हेलो व्यूअर्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला ऑफ बायोफिजिक्स माई नेम इज डॉक्टर मनोज सेमवाल आई एम अ मेडिकल फिजिसिस्ट एट आर्मी हॉस्पिटल रिसर्च एंड रेफरल डेली कैंट अ मेडिकल फिजिसिस्ट इज अ फिजिसिस्ट हु अप्लाइज द आइडियाज एंड कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ फिजिक्स इन मेडिसिन एंड टूडे इन दिस मॉड्यूल आई एम गॉन्ग टू टॉक अबाउट रेडिएशन डिटेक्टर्स as the term indicates detectors in various forms and in various spheres of radiation applications are required not only to measure the amount of radiation but also at times to alert us about the presence of radiation because whether we like it or not radiation is ever present whether it's natural background radiation or because of human induced activities so we need to be aware of radiation because radiation not only has advantages but it has proven to have negative effects for example radiation can cause cancer in one of the modules i have discussed about radiation carcinogenesis then radiation can cause severe injuries like burn almost looking like burn injuries you may be familiar about lot of radiation accidents and what radiation i are we talking about we are here not talking about radiation like light which we all are familiar because this also is radiation here we will be talking about radiation which can cause ionization because it is the ionization capability of radiation which causes harm similarly it is the ionization capability of radiation which is useful in detecting the radiation because generally we don't see radiation so we use its indirect effects for example ionization and from the amount of ionization we can detect the radiation or even quantify the amount of radiation similarly radiation can cause several chemical effect so those chemical changes one can measure and then that chemical system becomes our radiation detector similarly there are many other mechanisms for example radiation can cause polymerization so if we can measure that amount of polymerization that again will become a dosimeter radiation detector or dosimeter so we require radiation dosimeters wherever we use radiation let's have this clear and based on that only we will be able to not only detect we will be quantifying it and since we know that radiation is harmful we will be able to protect ourselves also radiation is extensively used in medicine most of you are familiar where you have seen x rays chest x rays commonly done it involves radiation similarly you might have heard about computerized tomography that also involves radiation then you might have heard about radiotherapy where radiation is used to treat cancer in all these processes we need to quantify the amount of radiation that is given to a patient for treatment or for diagnosis how do we do that to quantify that we need to first detect it and measure the radiation right so measurement either can be done by as i told you by its ionization capability or its chemical changes that radiation produces so in this module i'll be talking to you about various mechanisms of radiation detection and what are the various type of radiation detectors employed the objectives of this module on radiation detection are to familiarize the viewers with various radiation detection mechanisms detectors and dosimeter based on these mechanisms advantages and disadvantages of detector systems at the end of the talk the audience will have ideas about the radiation detectors and their applications in a given situation now viewers let's first get it sorted out what are the types of radiation we are talking about whose detection we would be talking about radiation ionizing radiation can be broadly classified into two forms one is charged particulate radiation for example electrons beta rays 
or heavy charged particles like protons, alpha rays, other energetic ions, cosmic rays. And then another category could be uncharged radiation. For example, electromagnetic radiation like X-rays, gamma rays or neutrons. Now, where do you encounter ionizing radiation? In addition to the natural background radiation, which include cosmic rays, radon in the dwellings or, for example, monazite sands in the Kerala coast, we encounter ionizing radiation in almost all aspects of human activities, such as medical application, industrial application and research. Now, what type of detectors are available with us? Depending upon the effect of the radiation being observed, the detectors can be categorized as ionization-based detectors. And the most popular among them are ion chambers, Geiger-Muller counters, and semiconductor diodes. Then detectors based on the excitation caused by radiation. And the detectors based on these excitations are thermoluminescent detectors, commonly known as TLDs, optically stimulated detectors or OSLDs, and scintillator detectors. So this is the category which falls in excite on based on the mechanism of excitation. Then the third category of detector could be depending on the chemical changes that radiation produces. And we all are familiar with films, how radiation can cause darkening, for example, on the photographic film. Similarly, radiation can cause, even ionizing radiation can cause darkening of films. So films can be used to detect radiation. Similarly, there are certain gels which can also be used because radiation can set in the process of polymerization or certain other changes and then those gels can also be used as radiation detector or dosimeters. Then the biological effect of radiation. We have discussed in another module, for example, in the module on radiation carcinogenesis. Radiation can cause biological damages or biological changes. Detectors based on biological changes, for example, chromosome aberrations. Radiation can cause chromosome aberrations. So if we can measure those chromosome aberrations, we would be able to detect the radiation and the dose absorbed by that particular radiation. There is one more way of categorizing the radiation detectors. For example, we can say gas filled detectors, for example, ion chambers and GM counters, solid state detectors, for example, diodes, scintillators, TLDs and films, and liquid detectors in aqueous form, for example, aqueous chemical detectors and liquid scintillators, etc. Now, what should be an ideal radiation detector? So, everybody would like to have a detector which can be used in any situation, any condition. So, that detector should have the properties. For example, it should be compact and rugged. Its response should be stable with time and even changing environmental conditions. For example, high humidity, high temperature, etc. should not change its response to radiation. Then, it should be energy whatever radiation we are using the dose it should show should be independent of the energy of the radiation similarly at what rate the radiation is falling on it its integral response should be independent of the dose rate similarly this ideal radiation detector should have high efficiency it should have fast response time it should not happen that it is irradiated now and that it takes a lot of time to see the radiation response it should not itself suffer radiation damages. Otherwise, over a period of time, the response of the detector will change. Important another factor, it should be low cost and it should be convenient to use. But the bottom line is, there is no ideal universal radiation detector. Gas fill detector, how do you design it? If you fill the gas in a container, the radiation passing through the gas can ionize the gas molecules. Increasing the amount of radiation will proportionally increase the ionization because this is an ionizing radiation. The charge thus produced due to ionization can be collected using an external electric field. For example, if you have a cylindrical container, you 
give a positive and negative charge to its outer wall and put on central electrode and put apply a voltage between them so whatever is the charge depending on its polarity it will accordingly go to different electrodes so thus you can collect the charge the result is and when you collect that charge the result would be what an electric pulse that can be measured by an associated measuring device so with proper calibration the value of charge collected on current or current gives information about the radiation exposure or its strength or intensity the choice of gas which gas to fill in a detector what should be the geometry of the detector whether it should be a pancake type it should be cylindrical or spherical and what should be the applied potential between the electrodes within this uh, detector container gives us controlling power over the properties of the detection system now suppose you have a gas filled detectors of a certain size and you apply a certain voltage between its collecting electrode initially when you have a low voltage most of the ion produced by radiation may not get collected some of them will recombine if the voltage is not sufficient as a result if you keep increasing the voltage between the electrodes the current or charge collected would increase and ultimately reach a plateau region where the total charge produced by the ionization event has been collected okay so when all the charge collected by the radiation event has been collected the amount of charge collected would have some relation with the energy deposited by the radiation or the amount of the radiation that fell on the detector now again let's experiment we keep increasing the voltage between the electrodes as we keep further increasing the voltage the ionization produced within the detector would we start causing further ionization because the ions will gain sufficient energy to produce further ionization as a result the pulse height now the amount of charge produced will keep increasing with the amount of voltage you have applied and this region is then called as a proportional region it depends not only on the amount of energy spent by the incident radiation but also the voltage applied beyond a certain point this increase in the pulses would not happen because sufficient ionization has been produced by the incident radiation by the ionization produced within the detector again you will encounter a plateau region where with increasing voltage the pulse height or the amount of charge collected would not increase and that region is again good for radiation detection that region is called as a geiger region so we have two regions where there is a plateau where the pulse height does not increase with applied voltage to a some extent initial region was called as ion chamber region and then the third region was called after proportional region was called as the geiger muller region or the geiger region so these two regions are very frequently used for radiation detectors so let's come to the ion chambers that means the initial plateau region what are the advantages because as i told you the voltage applied in this region does not change the pulse height that means the detector is insensitive to applied voltage this translates into less expensive power supply so sm small voltage fluctuation would not change the pulse size similarly the current saturation voltage or saturated charge collected total or the current produced by the ionization is directly proportional to the energy deposited by the incident because all the ions produced by radiation have been collected so more the number of ions more will be the current similarly this detector is less vulnerable to gas deterioration this we would see later in the geiger region where because of the multiplication of ions within the gas gas deterioration takes place hence change in concentration of electronegative contaminants does not seriously impact the response of a detector based on ion chamber principle but what are the disadvantages low current that means there is no amplification of current happening here whatever is the charge produced by the ions is being collected so there is no amplification as a result the current is low if the amount of radiation falling on it is low and inherently ion chambers are low sensitivity detectors so they are unsuitable for low radiation environments another disadvantage you need to use low noise electronics 
to obtain good signal to noise ratio because signal produces low in current value similarly vulnerability to atmospheric condition for example if the temperature and pressure within the detector changes the density of air within it will change as a result amounts of ion produced will change needing different calibration preferably used what is the other disadvantage preferably used in current charge modes and not in pulse mode due to external amplification circuit and its response time issues where are ion chambers used they are you would see them being used at survey meter around a radiation installation so ion chambers are used to survey a radiation installation if there is a radiation generating equipment around it what is the amount of radiation for protection purposes then it is ion chambers are extensively used as dosimeters for radiation output measurements of equipment used in radiation therapy or radiology for example x-ray machine radiotherapy machines similarly ion chambers are also used as isotope calibrator what is isotope calibrator different radio isotopes will emit different amount of different types of radiation and what is the amount of radioactivity on a ra isotope that is being used in nuclear medicine on radiotherapy this isotope calibrated can figure out then comes as i told you after the ion chamber region there is a proportional region where the pulse height or the charge collector is proportional to the initial radiation produced this is achieved by increasing the voltage applied across the gas detector why do we do that to achieve better as i told you to improve the signal to noise ratio as you increase the signal height the process leads eventually to as you keep increasing the voltage what happens is the primary ions produced by the ionizing radiation starts producing secondary ionization and as a result eventually it leads to cascade or avalanche multiplication and consequently a large pulse at the output large pulse of what current pulse or charge pulse okay typically a cylindrical proportional counter is similar to a simi they would look like similar to a cylindrical ion chamber though with mechanics that can withstand higher electrical potential multiply how much is amp the signal amplified in a proportional counter with respect to our normal ion chamber 10 raised to power 3 to 10 raised to power 4 output here in terms of charge or current is still proportional to the initial charge produced like ion chambers virtually any gas can be used however since the threshold of gas multiplication in novel gases is much lower than in polyatomic gases the standard practice is to use a novel gas as the main component of the filling gas mixture argon being cheaper is the most common gas used in proportional counters where are they used proportional counters they are mainly used for neutron detections boron filled proportional counters are used for this purpose why because for example slow neutrons react with boron to produce alpha particle through n alpha reaction now n alpha particles are charged particles and they are intensely ionizing so now neutrons are being detected indirectly because they are neutral particles so with boron they react a nuclear reaction produces alpha particles those alpha particle produce further ionization in the bf3 field proportional counters and that current that is being produced is measured using a large chamber for example you have a huge spherical chamber filled with bf3 all the electrons generated by alpha particles through an alpha reaction of the neutron can be stopped within the chamber and we can know energy of the neutron source because all of the emitted radiation which has produced ionization has been stopped within the detector so this is for because an alpha reaction happens with slow neutrons what about detecting fast neutrons for fast neutron detection you slow them down by using paraffin moderated around this slow neutron detector thermal neutron for thermal neutron you don't fill bf3 boron trifluoride gas but you fill helium gas and with helium thermal neutron react by an np reaction that means the neutrons will produce protons protons being charged particle will produce further ionization 
These proportional counters are used for alpha and beta spectroscopy. Advantage of proportional counter over the next ion chamber uh, gas field detector that we are going to discuss, that is Geiger counter, is its short resolving time. That means the time if two radiation events happen between 10, less than 10 microsecond, then proportional counter would not be able to register them as two events. We will see later the geiger muller counter has this resolving time much larger than proportional counter. So this is because it has a low resolving time. Now coming to geiger muller counter, when the applied electric potential, remember what I told you initially, in a radiation gas field radiation detector, if you continue to increase the potential between the cathode collecting electrodes, localized avalanches in the proportional counter spread through the chamber. In, his, in the proportional region, the avalanches were localized along the electrodes. But now, with further increase in the voltage, they happen throughout the chamber volume and a breakdown situation reached. Even a single ionization event can cause this breakdown. So, even a small amount of radiation incident on a radiation detector being used in the geiger muller region will cause this breakdown within the detector resulting in extremely high currents. What is the amount of amplification here? 10 raised to power 10. With ion chambers, there was no amplification. With proportional counter, it was 10 raised to power 3 to 10 raised to power 4. And with geiger muller counter or GM counter, it is 10 raised to power 10. So in this case, no need of further amplification. It is useless for spectroscopic purposes because it will not be able to differentiate between two different energies. Both of them are causing breakdown in the entire within the detector and same amount of pulse uh, height pulse, uh, pulse height is being achieved for any kind of radiation used for particle counting per only for counting purposes. As I told you resolving time or dead time here is very high between 200 to 400 microsecond. During this period at GMC GM counter does not record any ionization event, but it is easiest among all three to build. High sensitivity, this can be used. Where can GM counter be used then? As I told you, this is highly sensitive. Even a small amount of radiation can be detected here because the amplification is very high. So high sensitivity, so it, it, they are used in high sensitivity radiation survey meter. That means where low level of radiation, of radiation are expected you will use a GM counter based radiation survey meter. It can be used for contamination monitors and zone monitors. They come in different forms. For example, cylindrical shape, pancake shape, and window shape, etc. depending on the application. Now, from the gas field detector, let's come to scintillation detection. What is scintillation? If passage of radiation through certain materials results in emission of radiation in the visible of UV region, that is called a scintillation. Now, this emitted light caused by radiation can be converted into an electrical signal with the help of photo detectors. If you have a photo detector, you may be aware of many photo detectors, you know about photoelectric effect. So, light photon falls on a certain material and the material emits electron. So, you can produce an electrical signal. So, light emitted by ionizing radiation is incident upon a photo detector and that is measured and in terms correlated with the amount of radiation. And what is used for this purpose is photomultiplier tube. A photomultiplier tube achieves multiplication of 10 raised to power 5 to 10 raised to power 6. Mind you, remember, geiger muller had 10 raised to power 10 amplification. PMT generally has 10 raised to power 5 to 10 raised to power 6. Nowadays, photodiodes are replacing photomultiplier tubes. Generally, high efficiency scintillators emit in the UV range and hence are mixed fix with another class of scintillators to shift the wavelength to visible range because visible light detection is easier than UV light detector or cheaper. Decay time ranges from few nanoseconds to milliseconds. That means these scintillators, if the radiation falls at a certain point of time, the light production should happen within few nanoseconds up to few milliseconds. If the scintillation is delayed, which is called after glow, then that kind of a scintillator which will be unacceptable as a detector. Similarly, now we can divide these scintillators into two categories, depend inorganic and organic or solid or liquid. Organic scintillators are generally less efficient than inorganic scintillators, but they are not hygroscopic. That means they don't absorb moisture. 
and result in less back scatter as they are made of low atomic number material like hydrogen good for low energy less penetrating radiation for example anthracene steel bean are organic crystalline scintillators among the most popular inorganic scintillators are sodium iodide activated by thallium cesium iodide activated by thallium bismuth germanate they are most popular inorganic scintillators they are high atomic number high density as a result they are high efficiency radiation detectors in some other module you will be knowing how high z material high atomic number material high density material are also high efficiency radiation detectors in this module we will not uh, will restrict ourselves only to the detection part and not discuss the physics of how radiation interacts with matter so these scintillator detectors are good for gamma ray detection and spectroscopy then there are liquid scintillators for example if there is a very low energy radiation such as a beta radiation and you you need to detect it from a certain source you bring a radiation detector close to it maybe the beta radiation will not be able to penetrate into the detector to its sensitive volume so what happens is liquid scintillation come handy there you mix the radiation emitting source with the liquid scintillator and after that the scintillator is going to emit light that light will come out of the container which is a transparent container light transparent container and this light will then fall on either photomultiplier tube or photodiodes and will be detected so these liquid scintillators are particularly advantageous for low energy radiation such as beta particles emitted by tritium and carbon 14 then comes another category of detectors called semiconductor detectors they work on the principle of electron hole creation by radiation require only about 3 electron volt to create ionization please recall or remember that it requires about 13 electron volt to produce ionization in water whereas for semiconductors it is only 3 electron volt that means more number of ion pairs will be produced in a semiconductor as compared to a liquid detector but the problem with semiconductor detector is that they need cooling and we are very high purity material to reduce thermal noise what are the material semiconductor materials used silicon germanium gallium arsenide silicon is the most common material for detector as it's cheap but gallium arsenide is used extensively as it has higher photon absorption efficiency as compared to silicon which has allowed the development of extremely thin that about 100 to 200 micron micrometer thin x-ray detectors so very compact detectors have been developed based on gallium arsenide semiconductors another advantage of gall gallium arsenide is that it can be operated at room temperature which simplifies the detector design considerably and also cuts down the cost of development and operation generally used in diode form as detectors the depletion layer in the pn junction diode serves as a sensitive volume for detection what are the advantages of diode semiconductor diode or dosimeter they are instantaneous readouts they are compact in size they are rugged and they have high resolution for spectroscopy because it requires only 3 ev to produce one ion pair but what are the limitations they are energy dependent response they directional dependence that means from which direction radiation is falling on the detector response might vary depending on the direction then temperature also changes their response that's called thermal effect and diodes are also known to change their response with time because of radiation dam damage caused to them over a long period of time so after talking about gas based detectors scintillation detectors and semiconductor detectors let's come to another class of detectors called thermoluminescent detectors term thermoluminescence stands for thermally stimulated luminescence which is in simple word means emission of light by thermal stimulation the usefulness of thermoluminescent material as radiation detector was realized way back in 1950s since that time such detectors are extensively used in dosimetry it is a class of inorganic materials insulators and semiconductors tl dosimetry is used in many scientific and applied field such as radiation protection radiotherapy clinic industry and 
space research using many different materials. There are many different TL materials. Thermoluminescence is based on the band theory of solids. That means there is a conduction band, there is a valence band, radiation. Because of radiation, electrons are emitted from the valence band to the conduction band. And since there is imperfection in the crystal structure, the con from the conduction band, they get trapped in the forbidden band where there are traps available because of the imperfection of the crystal. And they remain trapped there till because due to heating or that is what we call as thermal stimulation, these electrons get out of these traps and combine with the holes which are close to the valence band and during that process emit light. So that is why this is called thermal luminescence. There are many TL materials available. TLD-100, commercial name is TLD-100, which is a popular TLD material based on lithium fluoride, has a concentration of about 400 ppm parts per million of magnesium added to serve as the primary trapping center. What is the sensitivity of this TLD-100? About 100 microwave, which is quite low. So among the disadvantages of TLDs are that it has no instantaneous readout like you have in the semiconductor detectors. Then there is a problem of fading and hence needs calibration for this also needs for absolute dose calib measurements, calibration for absolute dose measurements. Then there are handling issues. Scratching on the surface of the TLD may lead to reduction in its mass or its response may become contaminated by grease or adhesive can, that can change its response. So these are some of the disadvantages of TLDs. A new category of detectors which has become popular nowadays is optically stimulated luminescence detectors or OSLDs. What is OS? What is optically stimulated luminescence? It is the luminescence emitted from an irradiated insulator or semiconductor during exposure of light. So unlike TLD where you needed heat to produce light from the trapped energy of the radiation uh, the material, here you used one wavelength of light to excite the material to emit another wavelength of light. An excitation source here is a laser source which eliminates the sample and the total light yield is measured with a photomultiplier tube. OSL techniques have advantages over conventional TLD techniques for a number of reasons. The most obvious advantage lies in the fact that the readout method is all optical requiring no heating of the samples. One of the commonest OSL materials is aluminum oxide doped with carbon. Interestingly, this material started as a TLD material known as TLD 500, but its fading attracted attention towards its OSL property. Now, sensitivity, detection sensitivity here can be down to a few microgray, which was about 100 microgray with TLD, TLDs, well below with the TL material. So what, the, what happens in an OSL material is you have a dosimeter so after irradiation with ionizing radiation, uh, this is brought to a OSL reader. In the OSL reader, a certain wavelength of light in the form of laser is, illuminates this sample. As a result, this sample emits light in another wavelength on another wavelength and that is detected by a PM detector. So in, in place of a therm heating, you have a light source which is use, being used as a stimulant. So the OSL nowadays, because there is no heating required, are becoming very popular dosimeters and they have a potential to become online also using optical fibers to send light for excitation as well as to collect the emitted light. Another form of dosimeter or detector is film dosimetry. It is attractive due to its high spatial resolution and wide accessibility because films are available everywhere. It has short measuring time and being intrinsically two-dimensional and integrating. Film dosimetry is widely used in radiotherapy to obtain the relative dose distribution of electron and photon beams in water, in plastics and in inhomogeneous medium. In fact, before the use of TLDs became very routine for personal dosimeters in protection, films were used as film, they used to be called as film batches for dosimetry purposes or radiation protection, personal radiation protection dosimetry. So in the films, amount of radiation fallen on the film results in blackening and that amounts can be related to the amount of blackening in, on the film produced which is called as optical density. And then that film is processed 
and one measures the optical density, calibrates that film system and it can be used as a radiation detector and dosimeter. But the problem with this such kind of film was that processing conditions also could change the response of the dosimeter or detector or temperature, temperature of the processing, the concentration of the chemical used in processing, all could be variables in knowing the response of the films. Now a new category of film has come which has obviated the need of processing. They are called radiochromic film. These films use dye, a dye, cyanide dye films has resolved some of the problems experienced with conventional dosimeters. The film consists of thin radio sensitive colorless leuco dye bonded on a 100 millimeter thick micron thick mylar base. They are colorless before the radiation and turn a deep blue color upon a radiation without physical, chemical or thermal processing. The radiochromic films most commonly used in medical applications are GAF chromic films like model MD55, EBT2, EBT3. One more class of dosimeters or detectors is aqueous chemical dosimeters and in that Frique, ferrous sulfate, benzoic acid, xanolol orange, they are some of the dosimeters. What happens here is the chemical change due to radiation is ferrous ions are converted into ferric and the ferric ion concentration is proportional to radiation dose. These ferric ion concentration can be measured by UV spectrophotometry in Frique and visible spectrophotometry in the FBX case. The measuring range of Frique is 40 to 400 gray whereas that of FBX is 0.1 centigrade to 3000 centigrade. And mind you that the FPX dosimeter has been developed in India as a modification on Frique dosimeter. It has found many applications in medical medicine and industry. Then till now we were all we were discussing about point dosimeter or 2D, 2D dosimeter. The new class of dosimeters about which a lot of research is going on are gel dosimeters that can be used for mapping three dimensional doses because in the gel is trapped the information which is in three dimensional and if you can read this information even ferrous getting converted into ferric if it is happening in a gel matrix and later on you can use certain imaging methodology maybe MRI or maybe CT to find out this ferric concentration we will be able to map the dose in three dimension. To summarize radiation detection and measurement is a sine qua non for safe and efficient application of ionizing radiation in various aspects of human activity. There is no one radiation detector that is useful for all types of applications. Depending upon their properties, several types of radiation detectors or dosimeters have been developed suiting different requirements. Ionization based gaseous detectors, semiconductors, scintillators based solid state detectors, thermal optical luminescence based detectors, chemical detectors and dosimeters and gel based three dimensional dosimeters are some of the types of radiation detectors that have found application in diverse fields such as medicine, nuclear power and research. Thank you.